Good afternoon. 14B District Court is now in session. This is Magistrate Hillary Braley presiding. Now calling case number 24C0835. This is Cash LLC versus Dennis Jones. Sorry. Good afternoon, Judge. This is Natasha Jackson on behalf of the plaintiff. Might be number 82333. And good afternoon, Your Honor. Uh, Andrew Hender up here on behalf of defendant PA2429. Okay, thank you. Also, Magistrate, thank you. So, um, today is the date and time set for a first pre-trial in this matter. Have the parties had a chance to have a conversation with this? Uh, yes, Your Honor. I Oh, sorry. Um, I have communicated with uh, Plaintiff's Counsel uh, regarding settlement, and I'm hoping to get something worked out. Okay, and also to the person on the device labeled Denny, would you be Dennis Jones? You need to unmute. Yes. Okay. State your name. Mm -hmm. uh, Dennis uh, Jones. Okay. Thank you. Uh, okay. So at this time, if the parties wish, I can put you all into a breakout room so that you can discuss this. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Your Honor. Or, thank you. You thank will get you, Your Honor's fine. Just it's I'm not the judge. I'm the magistrate. So. <laughs> Okay, so you should get that invitation right now. Thank you.
Hello, Attorney Dixit. Everything okay? Uh, yes, yes. He's uh, uh, he's actually speaking to his um, um, I'm sorry, his client. So he just wanted me to kind of. So he just be. Oh, there he is. We've reached the settlement. Uh, Ms. Uh, Ms. Dixie, he can do a lump sum. Within oh, you can do a lump sum for the 2500 Yep. Okay, perfect. And when can he make that payment by? Uh, within 30 days. 30 days. Okay. Okay, sounds good. Okay. So am I hearing, wait, now recalling case number 24C0835. This is Cash LLC versus Dennis Jones. Yes. Okay. And it sounded like you were putting, is it a consent judgment? I just we would just do a I'm sorry not uh, magistrate we would just do a uh, because it is it is being paid within 30 days so from today that would be by June 29. Uh, so what we'll do we'll just do a stipulation to dismiss you know once we have the payment in our office uh, our firm's policy is to uh, before I can send the stipulation to dismiss to to the court I do have to wait 10 days just to make sure that the funds clear so once we receive the payment I'll wait 10 days I'll send in the meantime I'll send uh, attorney Hendra a uh, stipulation to dismiss and uh, once we have that uh, once the 10 day hold has been lifted I, I'll send it to the court okay the stipulation to dismiss okay and what uh, what was the amount again it was two thousand five hundred. Um, it's a one um, lump sum payment paid by thirty days from today, so June twenty ninth. Uh, does does that work? Um, June twenty ninth. Does that work, Attorney Andrew? Uh, yes, yeah. June twenty ninth. Okay. Yep. Okay. Right. That's it. Thank you. Okay. So just so that I'm clear, uh, the amount is to be paid in full $2,500 by June 29th. Once it's been paid, plus an additional 10 days at that point, you'll be sending in a stipulated uh, motion in order to dismiss. So, okay. Uh, yes. Yes. Yes, Your Honor. Yes, Your okay. Honor. Thank you. Then, um, okay. I guess we will await that in about a month. Okay. Yes. Uh, if mm -hmm. there's nothing else, then the parties are free to sign out of Zoom. Thank, right. you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.
Okay, thank you for your patience. Now calling case number 17C1747. This is Credit Acceptance Corporation versus Tanisha Booker. Appearances for the record, please. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Michael Kirschenheider for the plaintiff, P75722. How are you? Okay, thank you. Uh, Ms. Booker, can you please unmute and state your name? Tanisha Booker. Okay, thank you very much. So today is the date and time set for a hearing on the defendant's motion for installment payments. What I am seeing is a motion uh, you would like to start paying $50 every two weeks. Yes. Okay. And Attorney Kirschenheider? Judge, I, in reviewing the file, I, I don't necessarily have an issue um, with uh, Miss Booker paying fifty dollars every two weeks. Uh, I just, based on what she indicated for her um, finances, I, I'm not sure how she's going to be able to do it. So I, I just don't want us to enter into an order that we have to come back here and, and try to set aside. So if she's confident she can do it, I'm, I'm, you know, great. It's just she indicated she makes three hundred dollars a month, uh, so I don't know how she's going to be able to pay that. That's all. Yes. Uh, and I will admit the court has some of the, the same concerns. Do the two of you want to talk in a breakout room to see if there's a figure that makes a little bit more sense that you're willing to agree to? I mean, if that's what he wants to do. I'm currently unemployed. I don't have a job job I babysit, so I'm not going to be able to do any more than that regardless of what we come up with. No, I, I'm not asking for more, ma'am. I, I just want to make sure you're comfortable with that number. Oh, yeah. And as soon as I get working, if we have to go back to the $400 a month like I was when they were taking out of my, that's fine. I okay. just don't want it to get bagged up and then my bill is higher. Yeah, if if she can do it, Judge, that, that's that's fine with plaintiff. Also, magistrate, thank you. Not Judge. Oh, I apologize. I always call you Judge, sorry. That's okay. Um, okay, so ma'am, I, I think the concern is, are you confident that you can pay $50 every two weeks if what you're bringing in is about $300 a month? Yes. Okay, it, because if we do this and sign it as an order, then if you're not able to do it, then they can come back and say that you're not, you know, holding up your end of the deal. I understand. Okay. If you are sure, and if you don't want to have a conversation in the breakout room, then that is fine. We can do what you have asked. Okay. Okay. Um, so I am seeing that there was a request in writ for periodic garnishment that looks like it was entered April 4th of 2022. Right. Yeah, there should be um, no active garnishment, Your Honor, because the defendant is no longer employed at that institution. Yep. Okay. 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 Then you are saying that you can pay fifty dollars every two weeks. And you had it starting May twenty fourth. Obviously it is now the thirtieth. Attorney, are you okay with it starting June fourteenth? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Okay. So, ma'am, your first payment of fifty dollars then will be due on June fourteenth. Okay. Okay. And do you know where to send it to? I don't. I just know that I owe credit acceptance. I'll I'll send you out a letter, but you send it you send it to the plaintiff's office uh, or okay. the, uh, plaintiff's attorney's office. Sorry. Okay. 
And that would be that Birmingham, Michigan address that's on the court paperwork? Correct. Okay. So, ma'am, if you've got your court paperwork, there's the Birmingham, Michigan address for the attorney's office. Okay. Okay. So he's saying that's what you would send it to, but it sounds like he's going to send you something also. So, okay. Okay. Then the court is ordering that you'll pay the judgment in installments of $50 every two weeks to begin June 14th. Okay. Okay. Then if the parties are in agreement and don't have anything else, this hearing is concluded. You are free to sign out of Zoom. Thank you. Have a great day. Okay. Thank you.
Hello. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. We're currently waiting for this Samsung device to connect to audio. Okay. Hello to the person on the Samsung device. Would you be Eric or Rock? You need to unmute. Hello. Hi, are you Eric or Rock? I am. Okay, thank you. Now calling case number 24C1114. This is Scott Matheson versus Erica Maureen Rock. State your names for the record, please, starting with Mr. Matheson. Scott Matheson. Thank you. And Ms. Rock, state your name for the record. Erica Rock. Okay, thank you. So today is the date and time set for a first hearing in this small claims case. And before we get started, I do want to inform both of you that one, first off, as a district court magistrate, you are able to appeal my decision within seven days from today. That would be appealed directly to the judge, Judge Washington, here at the district court. Uh, by continuing in the small claims division, you are waiving the right to counsel, that is the right to an attorney. You are waiving the right to a trial by jury, and you are waiving the right to recover more than $7,000 total. So... Uh, and if this does get appealed to the judge, you are also waiving the right to appeal past the judge. So, do you both understand all that? Yes. yes. Okay, thank you. And did you wish to proceed forward in the small claims division? Or do yes. you wish to move to the general civil? Okay. Small claims. Okay. And Ms. Rock, that's a question for you, too. You also have the right to remove if you wish to do so. Remove what? Remove the case from small claims to the general civil division. No. Okay. Okay, then given that, we will proceed. So what we are going to do, uh, I will swear in both sides and take testimony. I will start with Mr. Matheson because he is the moving party, the plaintiff who filed the case. You are not to interrupt him, Ms. Rock. And then once he is done, uh, it will be your turn and uh, you, he will not interrupt you either. Okay? Yep. Okay. Uh, at the end of this, the court will be making a decision one way or the other. All right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. okay. So raise your right hands. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you are about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, to the best of your information, knowledge, and belief, Mr. Matheson? Yes. And Ms. Rock? Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. So, uh, Mr. Matheson, you may proceed with your testimony. Okay, so I, I hired for... Um, I hired Erica's husband to do a deck for me. He came out, gave me an estimate. We agreed on, on a, a price. And then he said, go ahead and, and send payment, half of the payment to Erica's bank. Um, so I agreed. I sent $5,000 to Erica. And... Um, about six months later, the, the job never got completed. I asked jo Josh for the money back. Uh, I never got it back. And, and so here we are now. So since, since uh, the money went to Erica's bank, I would like uh, the money back from Erica, the $5,000 that uh, she owes me. Now, I do have some 
documents that were sent in, did you send them to Ms. Rock as well? Yes. Okay. Okay, so Ms. Rock, I yes. that, which did you receive copies of the, the documents that you... Um, yes, ma'am. Okay, okay. So, um, and I do see what appears to be a screenshot of what says money sent, sent to Erica Rock. There's a phone number listed mm -hmm. uh, in the amount of $5,000. And that appears to have been sent on April 6, 2023. Is that all correct? Yes. As far as you know, Mr. Okay. And I was going to ask Mr. Matheson, but yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. And... Uh, Mr. Matheson, you do have a uh, judgment against Joshua Rock in the matter uh, 23C2773, is that correct? Yes, that's correct. And I'm seeing that was a default judgment. The total amount was for $6,732, correct? Correct, yes. Okay. Thank you. And on that matter, you just have Joshua Rock listed as the defendant. So correct. Okay. Um. So what brings you to file the case today then against Ms. Rock? Really, it was. Um, I should have included her in the beginning, and I didn't. Um. So after after winning the judgment against Josh and his refusal to pay uh, me any money at all to give me my money back, um, I decided to take her to court to get my $5,000 back. I'm willing to reduce Josh's judgment um, minus the $5,000 from his judgment if Erica pays me the $5,000, the problem is I don't think Josh really has any actual income. And, and so me trying to get money from Josh is very going to be very difficult for me. Erica, um, I believe has a job and can pay her bills. And mm -hmm. I feel that, I feel that um, since I gave the money to her and it's in her bank bank, and it's under her name that she owes me the 5000 But like I said, I'm willing to subtract that from Josh's if she pays the 5000 Uh, Mr. Matheson, did you have any other testimony or evidence or witnesses that you wanted to present? No. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Ms. Rock? Yeah. Okay. Uh, you may proceed with your testimony. Um, I guess I'm confused as to why this is even occurring. It feels like harassment when there's already a judgment. But um, the reason it was sent to my Zell is because the plaintiff said he did not have PayPal or another way to send it. So that's why that was handled that way. Um, my husband went out multiple times um, to do work. Mind you, it was an hour and a half drive. Um, they and my husband has screenshots of all of this. He didn't go to court. His sister passed away. It was a whole thing. But um, literally have gone online and slandered him. Um, all these things. One time the plaintiff's wife was online talking all this stuff while my husband was working in the backyard. 
he went to the door. She's like, oh, I didn't know you were here and deleted it. Um, so the $5,000 was a deposit for the materials and the work that was done, which Josh finished up to that point. But um, Mr. Matheson was making it impossible. He wouldn't let my husband's crew be at his house to work without my husband. Like it was just a toxic work environment. So Josh finished that amount um, and told him he was done. This man came to my house in Clarkston. I have it on my ring cam, threatening my husband, pretending to brandish a gun. I mean, I'm in fear now because this feels like harassment. So that's what's been occurring. And like I said, I don't, I'm not any part of this. It's my husband's business, but I just, I don't know. So that's what it is. But the work was done and there's photos to show he didn't pay for the full job. So I don't understand why any of this is occurring. But if I hear you correctly, you're not contesting the fact that the $5,000 was sent to you. And a technicality because he couldn't send it. But I in turn gave it to Josh to do the materials and the work that was finished. My husband's business is an LLC. Like, I'm not part of it. I just want to say that that uh, I'm, I don't I'm, I'm trying not you can't to interrupt. interrupt. Her, so I, I thought you're know. not supposed to interrupt. OK, both of you can hush for a moment while I review this. Thank you. So what I am seeing in here regarding the pictures of the work that was done is a couple of sawhorses in the yard. My husband has actual pictures. And then also the okay. pictures that were posted on Yelp were not even that job. Okay. Do you have any evidence with you that you can present today? I don't have it with me, but my husband has it. Like, this is his business, his job. I don't think I should be any part of it. Okay. And I understand. And if there's a judgment against him, then he has to deal with it. Okay. And this is a case against you. And today is the date of the court date. And in the court paperwork, it says that you're to be prepared for the court hearing today. So you're telling me that you don't have the pictures that you're talking about. I mean, I do, but I don't have them on me right now. I didn't think that I needed to do that because it's like I said, there's already a judgment against Josh. 
Like, it feels like harassment to me, ma'am. I don't, it makes me very uneasy. Like, I don't understand. Well, I can appreciate that. I am going to continue. I have an invoice in here. The uh, invoice is dated March 21st of 2023. There's a grand total listed of $10,000. And the description is a 12 by 18 deck. Complete structure built build with ground contact PT pine, assuming that's pressure treated, wrapped in Trex enhanced Rocky Harbor coastal bluff steps across entire front. Handrails on both sides, six sections in parentheses. Rocky Harbor handrail, white post sleeves, black wire for spindles, and then refer to picture, which there is a picture. Um, it looks like a handful of pictures that were done just uh, computer generated to sort of set up what it would look like. There's no mention on here of labor costs. I do not have any sort of invoice for labor costs. If I'm going solely off of what I have here presented to me in the file for court today, that I've got two sawhorses and some holes dug in the ground. That does not appear to be $5,000 worth of work. Certainly not that was listed on the invoice, which again doesn't even mention labor and seems to be solely to do with the parts required. So... At this time, the court is ready to make its decision, which is in favor of the plaintiff for $5,000. There's also a filing fee of $70 and a service fee of $95. So what happens to the judgment against my husband? I don't understand this. You can sue two different people for the same thing? So... In this instance, and as I stated before, you can appeal this to the judge. This judgment will be held jointly and severably with the judgment against your husband so that they cannot both be collected on. Thank you. I appreciate that. But the total amount of this judgment, the court is finding the damages of $5,000 the uh, costs of $70 and the service of $95 for a total of $5,165 in favor of the plaintiff. And again, if you wish to appeal, you have seven days to do so. If I appeal, can I give you the documentation then? Uh, it would be an entirely new hearing in front of the judge. So you would submit the documentation to the court. At that so time. I can submit like that documentation, the police reports, all of it to the judge? You can submit documentation to the court, yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, then if the parties don't have anything else, this hearing is concluded. No, nothing for me.